Hello, Gary Emerald here again with Tent Maker Ministries. I'm here again today with my good friend, the Right Reverend Minister Monster. We've just been discussing a major theological problem in uh, Christianity that has divided Christians in three different camps for, for many centuries. Calvinism, or Reformed, teaches that God can save all mankind, but he won't. Arminianism teaches that God wants to save all mankind, but he can't. And biblical or Christian universalism teaches that God wants to save all mankind, and he will. So those are the three factions that the church has been divided into over many, many centuries. The early church for the first 300 years taught biblical universalism, that God wants to save all mankind, and he will. And then Augustine came along in the fourth century, and he steered the church into the direction of sovereignty, predestination, and election. God does not want to save all mankind. He plans to eternally torment most of mankind. And that teaching plunged the church into the Dark Ages. And we didn't begin to come out of that Dark Ages until uh, the Reformation, when Arminianism began to flourish. And the teaching of Christian Universalism also began to sprout back up again. But it was severely persecuted by the Calvinists, Reformed, and the Arminianists. Anyway, I am a Biblical Universalist. I believe that Jesus wants to save all mankind, and he is going to save all mankind. I've been given great faith. I believe in the wonderful promises of Scripture. And, and I'm going to read some of these scriptures, and I'm going to challenge the right reverend monist, minister monster here. Uh, I'm going to challenge him on these scriptures. I'm going to read some scriptures, and if he objects to them, uh, I want him to stand up and, and object. And if he uh, finds that uh, he's in agreement, uh, he can just sit there and continue to pray and contemplate. Like I said, I've been given great faith. And you know what? Most Christians should be walking in great faith. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, he upbraided his own disciples. After spending years discipling them, they still lacked faith. He said, O oh, ye of so little faith, why do you doubt? They doubted him and they doubted the scriptures. You know, you can read scriptures, you can memorize scriptures, and actually never apply faith to them, and as a result, never end up really believing what they say. I'm convinced that most people sitting in pulpits who go to scripture memorizing courses, they don't believe most of what they sing and most of what of the promises in God. Let me give you some examples. You know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If we eat these scriptures, if we eat these promises and we mix them with faith, we can see spiritually that the Lord is indeed good to all peoples. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of these verses here and I'm going to put them on my plate, on my meal. And uh, Reverend Minister Monster, if you object, if you think that this verse is out of line, please speak up. In 1 Timothy 2.4, it says, God will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. What a glorious scripture. God will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the King James Bible. Now, some other translations like the NIV soften that and water that down a little bit. And they say that God desires all mankind to come to the knowledge of the truth. So he desires it, but, uh, but his desires aren't going to be met. He wants it, but, you know, there's the Arminian thing. He wants this thing, but it's just not going to happen. And yet Psalms 135.6 says God does what pleases him. Not only does God accomplish his will in the earth, 
According to Psalms 135.6, he accomplishes his desires. Whatever pleases him, that he will do. Anyway, the NIV and the King James desires or will, God's going to have either one of those accomplished. So I'm going to take that verse and I'm going to put it right there on my plate. I'm going to mix it with that great faith that God has given me. And I'm going to believe that God will indeed have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. How about this one? John 12, 47. Jesus came to save all. He came to save all. Now, a Calvinist obviously doesn't want to leave that. But the scripture there says he came to save all. I realize they say he didn't come to save all. But what are you going to listen to? Calvinist tradition or the scriptures? What about you, right, Reverend? Oh, he's silent. He's thinking about it. Here's another one. God works all after the counsel of his will. Now, can anything overcome the counsel of his will? He works everything according to the counsel of his will. That's a good one. I'll eat that. I'll mix a little bit of oil, a little bit of faith with that salad. That sounds like a nutritious meal to me. Let's take a look at another, another one here. We've got a couple of verses here where John 4, 42, Jesus is the Savior of the world. And 1 John 4, 14, again, Jesus is the Savior of the world. This is John the Apostle say, calling twice here. Jesus, the Savior of not just the church, the Savior of not just the frozen chosen, the Savior of not just Christians, but he says, the Savior of the world. Wow, glorious. Good stuff to eat. Let's look at some more. John 12, 32. I will draw all mankind unto myself. All mankind unto myself. This he spake signifying what manner of death he should die. That is the cross. That He went to the cross to redeem all mankind. Wow. Eat it. Good stuff. Let's look at some more. Okay, by him all were created. That's easy enough for most people to swallow. Let's stick that on the plate. Here, we've got 1 Corinthians 15, 22. It says, in Adam all died. In Christ shall all be made alive. Now here we have a, an equation kind of like Adam, death, Christ, life. All those who died in Adam, to the other side of the scale, will be made alive in Jesus Christ. Wow, that's so just, because there's none of us that are righteous. In Adam, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. It just makes sense that someone would come along better than Adam and undo all the works of Adam and bring us all to eternal life. What a, what a powerful scripture. What good food. Let's look at some more. Okay, Ephesians 1.10 says, All come into him at the fullness of time. There we go with that word all again. Can you handle that word all? All will come into him in the fullness of time. Would you like for all to come in in the fullness of time? Or do you have a problem with that? I mean, check your heart. Think about it. Do you have a problem with the worst of the worst being seated next to you in heaven? Does that offend you? If there's something inside of you that is offended at that, is that a holy offense or is that pride or ego or false sense of justice? What's going on here? Oh, whoo! Man, this plate is getting heavy, uh, but I have room for more. Lots more. Now, we're not going to get through all these scriptures that I have here. I mean, I have enough here for a banquet that will last for weeks. But we'll go through a few more here uh, as long as we can go through the YouTube length, which is 15 minutes. So we're going to have 15 minutes of awesome promises mixed with faith. And man, we should be done when we're done with this video. We should be just ready to go, to go out there and conquer the world for Jesus. Okay, some more. 
says here in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. And we know that no one can confess Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So somewhere here, every tongue will be moved by the Holy Spirit to declare Jesus as Lord. Is that glorious or what? You know, when the Bible speaks of the, the glory of the Lord shall cover the whole world. I mean, wow, these scriptures, if we ate them and we chewed on them a while and actually you mixed some faith with them, imagine how we could change the world. Imagine how we could love the world to Jesus if we believed that every person that we saw on the face of this earth is loved by God and therefore we should love them and we should draw them to Jesus through the love that God gave us. Wow, good food. Now here's a good for, uh, for the Jews out there who still have met their Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They're still blind. They're still not grafted back in again. But we have here in Romans 11:26, all Israel will be saved. Wow, now Israel has been stubborn and stiff-necked for thousands of years. And yet here is this wonderful, glorious statement, this promise, all Israel will be saved. Good news. Luke 2.10, that, that uh, the gospel, the gospel, the glad tidings will be a joy to all people, everyone. Now think about it. If most of mankind is being tortured and poked with pitchforks by demons in a lake of fire, being tortured day and night forever and ever, do you think that they would be joyful? Do you think that the, that the good news that they missed would be joy to them? Come on. If all people are going to experience this joy of the Lord, and all people are going to ultimately be saved. Joy to all people. Good stuff. Okay, let's look at some more. Hebrews 8, 11 and 12. All will know God. Will know God. Know God as in you know intimately. They will know, they will have full knowledge of Him. And when you intimately know God, you love God. You cannot help but love God when you truly know God. And that's the problem with most of us and most of those out there who uh, are estranged from Christ. They don't know Him. And you know what? If it's up to the church, they'll never know Him because we don't manifest that love of Christ to those that are out there that are, that are lost. Jesus said to overcome your enemies with love. And yet we're out there, Christians, we're out there in our armies, our German armies and Italian armies and French armies and British armies and American armies and Canadian armies. And we're out there killing people for stuff, for uranium and oil and material stuff. Ah, oh, yuck, how we have fallen. But let's believe Let's believe that all will know God. Titus 2.11 says that grace has appeared to all. I believe it. Romans 8.19 and 21, that creation will be set at liberty. All of creation. How much of creation? All of creation. I'll eat it. Colossians 1.20, all reconciled unto God. There's that word all again. Are you offended by that word all? Is there something inside of you that riles up when you see that word all, that all are saved, savior of all, reconciled to all in due time? Is there something inside of you that's offended by that? Let me tell you what it is. It's a tradition of man you have swallowed in church that makes the word of God of no effect. I'm quoting just nothing but scriptures, good, wonderful scriptures, and I'm mixing with faith, and I have faith enough to believe that God is able and loving enough and powerful enough to do all that he said in the scriptures. If there's something inside of you that hesitates on that, it's a tradition of man. Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers and the scribes, the religious leader, those who knew the scriptures in their head, he said, you've made the word of God of no effect by your traditions. You haven't mixed it with faith. Oh God, I hope and pray that the person that is watching